My next car is none other than the DMC DeLorean from Back to the Future, 1985. And before I get into what this what this car brings to this movie, mm-hmm. um, the DMC DeLorean is cool as fuck just because it exists. Okay, it's it's one of the coolest model yeah. cars that I've ever <laughs> seen. I mean, when you open the door and get in, it's like getting into a spaceship. And then when you open both the doors, it looks like it's going to take flight. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, <laughs> who had the wing doors first? Was it the DeLorean or was that the uh, the Lambo? I honestly don't know. I mm. honestly don't know, but I don't think Lambos Lambos open more like like a like a butterfly where this one kind of open like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um, that that to me is just it, it was so cool. They come in that like that graphite gray, gunmetal gray. I mean, it looks like it's just it's 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 a it's a tank on wheels. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> you know, so with that, and then for them to use that in this movie, you know what I'm saying, because of its uniqueness, there was not a lot of them made, it didn't last a long time, it was a, it was a very short run due to, you know, the, the, the political ties, and, the, and how the, how the DeLorean franchise was even funded, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. you can watch movies, look into that for yourself, if you want to see how much Koki was smuggling to get that, <laughs> get that, get that car off the, off the runway line, but, um, you know, the cool thing about this one, what separates this DMC DeLorean from all the others is that all you have to do is add a flux capacitor to it and it turns into a time machine. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. Are you right kidding there. me? Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> it yeah. already looked like a spaceship and now it, it, it can take you back to the future or back to the past or wherever you want to go. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. this this car is, is one of the most well-known and iconic cars vehicles in movie history it is it is as as well known as the mcdonald's m the golden arches you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. people don't even know might have never even seen back to the future but they know the delorean you know so i think that that's really cool and i like how you know with this one you know just like with the batmobile or with the james bond mobile it's not just the flux capacitor it's all the other attachments gadgets and enhancements that 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 this car has now of course this film came out in 85, so you have to keep that in mind that, you know, his switchboard is pretty much like, it's like, yeah. so, like, he, he, everything's labeled like at, with one of the you grocery know, store punchers yeah, and like, you know, it's <laughs> funny though, too, when I see future tech in, in old movies, it mm-hmm. always looks weird. Like, 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 if you see something like Avatar now, it's all touchscreen and, yeah. blah, blah. but then when you look at Alien and you, and, and it, it trips me out, it's like, these people have figured out how to do deep distance space travel. Hyper sleep and all that, but their displays look like something on a Commodore sixty four. Yes, dude. You know, you know like, like one one thing that always makes me makes me laugh, dog. If it's, it's if it's before the nineties, mm-hmm. the way that they have these these futuristic machines look, two things: a lot of buttons and blinking lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. But so this one, I mean, it's, it's it's got all these switches and gadgets, and you know, you put in what year you want to go and, and and the date and everything, and it'll take you there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um. What I really like also is that, you know, at the end of this film, we, we see the, the DeLorean kind of get its own enhancements where, you know, and all throughout the movie, 90 percent of the movie, it's just it's driving. It's driving, you know, and you got to you need this radioactive stuff to actually get it to work and, and, and to, to do the time travel. And so, of course, you know, when he's when Marty's stuck back in time, he's got to, you know, he, the only thing that's going to give that kind of energy is a lightning bolt. So they get resourceful. Watch the movie if you haven't seen it. But at the end, when Doc comes back, he's got the futuristic glasses on and, he, you know, Marty gets in and he's like, yo, we're going for a ride. Buckle up. But then the damn wheels turn down and the, the rocket fuel comes out and the thing starts flying. Mm. So, I mean, <laughs> like, what, what what more can you ask from a car? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It gives you everything. That follows the trends of upgrading the, the, the vehicle, too. Like, yes. Like, that, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely iconic, man. I love that, that damn car, man. But you know what's interesting? I did find out while you were doing that. The first winged car was the Mercedes-Benz of 300 SL in uh, 52. Mm. You know, so okay. um, and then they made a production model in '54 for the masses. So the '52 wow. version was for the racetrack. Okay, I um, mean that's still cool. Um, it looked like some James Bond would ride. Yeah, 